Hi you guys and welcome back to All Things Equilateral. I haven't said that in like eight months. I know, I can't believe it. So I did not mean for my videos to stop when they did, but as most of you know, I started a job as an elementary school librarian at a Title I public school here in our school district. And I've been making videos for distance learning learners um, about two videos a week have to go up and then I've been doing my job as an in-person librarian to about 500 elementary school children, kindergarten through fifth grade. It's been really a lot of fun. It's also been a lot of hard work. So I just haven't had the time slots to continue filming for this channel as well. But I'm going to do my best here because my two book besties, <laughs> Jesse from Jesse's Shelf and Trish, who's Instagram and Twitter and YouTube channel. Uh, Trish doesn't have one, but Jesse does. I'm going to link down below. We have been having so much fun doing um, buddy reads and just checking in with each other. They have been amazing to me, and I know I gave them a shout out in my life update, and this is not a life, life update, I promise, but I feel like I owed you guys a little bit of an explanation as to where I've been and how I'm doing. So as most of you know, my husband suddenly passed away on Kat's birthday, December 31st, 2019, and we have been reeling from that pretty much ever since. Um, I'm lucky to have found the job. I'm doing what I love and I have the support of my three kids. It's been a challenge as you guys also know because um, quickly after Ken my dad also passed away about five months later and my mom has been living with us and if you've ever lived with an 88 year old grandmother then you guys know the drill. It's been interesting living in a multi-generational household but it's not without its joys, um, as well as with some disagreements, not going to lie. So that's kind of where I've been and why I've been absent. But in talking to Trish and Jesse, they were like, hey, are you going to do Chiclet-a-thon this year? And I think this is the fourth year that uh, I would be doing it. Um, chiclet -a -thon started because... When Kat and I started our YouTube channels, our booktube channels, I thought, you know, readathons. It was the only way I was reading more than like one or two books a month, honest to goodness. I was a very busy stay at home mom, and the kids' activities um, kept me really busy as well. My son um, quickly after that started college, so I was trying to deal with him being away and going to see him whenever we could and making sure uh, that uh, we attended all his races because he's on a cross country and track team as well. So it was just a crazy busy time. And I never got to read as much as I wanted to unless it was a readathon, you guys. Kat and I became so passionate about readathons. And by the way, Kat, she didn't want to be co-host, but I'm going to link her channel. She's in my favorites, you guys. She's my kid, and I'm so proud of her. Anyway, what we're doing this year is our usual format. chick -a -thon was something I started because I saw that there was a need for a chick lit read -a -thon. Why? Because chick lit -a -thon, chick lit -a -thon, chick lit is my passion. It's my palate cleanser. Whenever I'm feeling down, happy, sad, whatever, if I pick up a chick lit book, it just kind of like clears my mind. It's like a reset button. Um, it makes me happy. Generally speaking, um, I only read happily ever after endings. So, you know, it's all good, right? What is chiclet? Chiclet, as I soon found out as the person who invented chiclet -a -thon, <laughs> is not what I thought it was. Chiclet is actually defined as any book that stars a female protagonist. So you guys, it could be uh, women's fiction. It could be historical fiction. It could be fantasy. It could be sci-fi. Mysteries, thrillers, really anything is chiclet as long as you have that female protagonist, the female main, char main character. 
I was a little disappointed in that because to me, Chicklet is a romantic comedy style plot, lots of madcap action, and you know, usually a protagonist who is trying to discover herself a little bit more. That to me is Chicklet. If you think of the sweet spot of Chicklet, I think Sophie Kinsella. So Shopaholic series, sure. Any Sophie Kinsella book is wonderful, as you know, because I'll put a card up. I have discussed a number of her books, and I started the hashtag Sophie Read Sophie, which I'll be getting back to. I swear I will, because uh, there are so many Sophie Kinsella books that I haven't read yet. Just when I think I have, I haven't. So what are we going to do this year? Well, it's a month-long readathon, like I said. We have five prompts. Super easy, right? You can double up, triple up, quadruple up, and you know what? If you can find a one book that fits all five prompts, I, oh my gosh, you're thinking like me <laughs> because that's sometimes what I do for readathons. I bring down like five or six prompts into like two books if I can, and I'll finish those two books in a week and I'm good to go. So, what are we going to do this year? This year we have the five challenges. So we thought we'd start with a color challenge because those are always easy. And hey, I encourage you to not go out and buy books, you guys. Because if you're like me, and usually I'm sitting in front of those rainbow shelves that I have in our family room, there are so many books that are unread on there that I really, my dog won't stop barking, you guys. I love him. He's a menace, but I love him. Anyway, um, check out the books on your shelf. Go shopping on your shelf, you guys. I highly encourage you to do that. So the first challenge is a book with yellow on the cover. Now, I was thinking Trish Duller's float plan because I've heard nothing but really good uh, feedback, good reviews about this book. And Trish Duller is a favorite author of so many people that I totally respect. We have such similar reading tastes. This will be my first book by her, and I think that's the one I plan to read. Though this isn't my TBR, this is just an announcement. So, because Jessie's getting married this year, I'm so excited for her. We thought we would do a book that has a wedding as part of its plot. So, keep in mind, this is not just it has to be part of the plot line. So, any book with wedding as part of its plot line. I will do a follow-up video that will have recommendations for each of the prompts, but just think, wedding plot line. Um, because Kat is going away to university this year, we don't know which one yet. She hasn't quite decided and we're waiting for the financial aid packages to come in to be truthful but she's gotten into a number of really wonderful schools so we thought we'd celebrate that with a book about um, that takes place at a college or university so the setting or at least part of it should be a college or university there's so many that have come out these days. One is a thriller that I have in mind that I've actually already read and so has Trish and we've really enjoyed it. And uh, it's a little bit about the college admissions scandal, but you don't have to make it part of the plot. It can literally be, you know, the setting. The setting is that of a college or university. Number four, and I got to credit Jesse with this. I think Jesse and Trish came up with this. It wasn't me. But during COVID, we've spent a lot of time in our houses <laughs> or outside on our patios or hiking. The girls and I have done a lot of hiking, um, but we haven't been able to travel. And so we thought it would be fun to pick a book with one of your dream destinations. So here you go, readers. You guys live out your travel dreams. <laughs> I haven't even decided. I mean, I love England. Um, I want to go to Ireland and Scotland one day. Um, I want to go back to Hawaii with the kids. Ken and I always plan to. Heck, we want to go visit Washington, D.C. too. So, you know, just some of my options there. And then the last one is um, 
we wanted to read a little historical fiction. So a historical fiction book with, of course, a female protagonist because it would not be chiclet otherwise. So those are our challenges, but wait, we also have a group read. The group read is a classic, a chiclet classic, and it was brought on because Jesse mentioned that she'd never read it, though I think, Jesse, am I right? Have you seen the movie? It was one of my favorites. It's still up there. It's, well, it's one of my favorites because it has a Pride and Prejudice plot line. You guys, Bridget Jones' Diary by Hel Helen Fielding is going to be our group read. So um, that's it. If you guys want to join us, it starts May 1st and goes till the end of the month. We will have a live show. We haven't set the date yet, but we'll promise to keep you inform informed. Follow us all on our social media accounts, which are listed down below, and you can stay up with, you know, what we're reading, what we're doing, what's happening. Um, we might have like a reading sprint or read along like some of the other booktubers are doing where we just, you know, sit and read it. That might be fun. Um, and uh, we definitely plan to have a discussion at the end of the month with our group read Bridget Jones Diary. So what do you think? Will you join us for Chick Lithathon this year? I hope you do. And I hope the books are easy to find. Remember, shop your shelves. I know that um, a lot of us have stress, stress shop throughout COVID. <laughs> as much as I'd like to think I haven't, I've done a little bit, um, a little bit here and there. And thank you so much for joining us again for Chick Lithathon this year. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Please click to subscribe and hit the bell icon to know when I upload because I'm going to be uploading more because Chick Lithathon is here. And then it's going to be summer vacation. And you know, I always upload during summer. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.